um, kind of an interesting um, situation here. We've got a, a demo coming up. Is this is this the Silver Spring demo? Okay. Okay. So we've got a we got a demo from uh, Silver Spring. We see. I know Frank Moab is is one. Frank, 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 I'm sorry. What's your last name? Mong. M O N G. Mong. Oh, sorry. Okay. Frank. Frank Mong. Moab. <laughs> Mel, how you doing, James Montana? Hey, nice to meet you. Do you want Mel to sit there or me sit here? Frank Mong and Mel. Mel Gears. Go ahead, Mel Gears. Sit in that seat. Gears, uh, G E H R. Has gears in a car. Gears, like great. Us. <laughs> okay. So if I'm going to show this meter, so, um, what's the? Yeah, there so you, you go. got a colleague who's going to drive a demo That's at right. the uh, at the station. So so tell me about Silver Spring. Um, sure. And Google and sure. Google Earth and all this cool stuff that you guys are doing. Yeah, well, Silver Spring Networks, uh, basically, in, in layman's terms, provides the internet for utilities. I know we've all, we all know what internets uh, do for us today, but the utilities kind of miss that, and now they want their own. And what we provide is the hardware, the software, and the services that enables the utilities to build this thing called the smart grid. And the smart grid, think of it as uh, internet for utilities. We allow the utility to connect directly to the consumer's home, and provide services, applications, updates directly to the consumer. Much more engaging and proactive. Um, you know, and one of the things uh, we want to show you later on in the, in the demo that Mel is going to provide uh, is that visual. What does that look like? And the benefits of this is huge for the utility, our customer. Uh, they get to be more proactive. They get operational efficiency, and you know, they get to really engage with the customer. From a consumer perspective, our customers that can operate within our, our network and our, our smart grid, you know, they get the benefits of energy efficiency, they get uh, to reduce their carbon footprint, and of course, they get to decide for themselves how they want to uh, use energy and how they want to conserve energy. So, huge benefits. Do you think we could apply this to healthcare and solve that problem too? <laughs> I, I wish we could, <laughs> and you know, may, maybe we can someday. But, uh, but the concept applies, right? Allowing Absolutely. the consumer to take control of his or her own consumption Right. And identify ways in which they can optimize their consumption and their use right. to save energy overall, lower right. their costs, et cetera. Right. Yeah, in Silver Good Spring, yeah, even though we're a quote-unquote startup, uh, we're doing quite well. We have 16 utilities across five different continents around the world, and uh, we're growing rapidly and, you know, having a great time. So what are some of the bigger utilities that you're working with? So, for example, Pacific Gas and Electric, Florida Power and Light uh, are two examples of our, our customers. And we have some customers in Australia as well. Okay, so so California obviously uh, very California. sensitive to that issue. Very so, uh, sensitive, yes. Good. Okay. All right. So we've we've got a, a demo. That's right. So Mel's gonna provide Mel, a demo. Wanna, sure. So the, uh, take us through and describe. Well, it? first of all, the smart meter story starts with a smart meter. So basically, this is an electric meter, uh, but it's a digital electric meter that has a card in it. It's a radio transmitter. It's a lot different than my meter. Yeah, probably. Your, <laughs> yours is no mechanical meter that That's spins right. around. This one doesn't spin. Right. Uh, but it communicates with the utility as many as 96 uh, times a day, as opposed to the utility used to read it once a month. So hence, big data. Who would have thought around you is all of this data? So, so that's uh, little data. Right? So, like, so the old meter was little data. Uh, this is big data. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so some examples of what we do with that, we have some samples in Google Earth. First of all, we deploy these in uh, neighborhoods and in high rises. On the demo here, you'll see a high rise, and this high rise is in Chicago. Uh, so we're going to tour downtown Chicago, flying by the Trump Tower, and you'll see two high rises. This is a 150 North Wacker. These buildings have meters scattered throughout the floors. The lines show you the RF signal that's propagating across the river. And then you'll see all of the meters in the building and the communications up through the center of the building. So this is a mesh. This gives the meter an opportunity to communicate whatever is the best path to send data back to the utility. So it's 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 making those optimization decisions constantly, on, on uh, second the fly. by second. Basically, you take out your old mechanical meter, you plug this meter in, and you hang and run. It discovers all its neighbors and automatically communicates back to the utility. So you're saying the infrastructure is a is a is a take out the old, put in the new, and pretty much. Now you do deploy what's called an access point around about five thousand meters. That access point uses cellular backhaul. Okay. So an ATT or a Verizon or a Sprint backhaul. Okay, so and once that access point is in place... It's hang and run. So uh, utilities can deploy thousands of these a day, uh, go down a street or up a high rise. Uh, the next thing we did is that once you have these meters in place, 
the utility can now be proactive as opposed to reactive. And so they can look at things like your voltage on a hot summer's day and see how the voltage is. So here we have a mesh of 130,000 meters over this city of Chicago on one of the hottest days of the year. And so the, the utility can now look at low spots in the grid caused by excessive use of air conditioners and be proactive and go out and fix the infrastructure before it causes problems with the customers. Uh, this will also help when uh, electric vehicles are more prominent because electric vehicles will be adding loads that are unexpected loads over time. So that plane there is basically the nominal voltage and you see peaks and valleys based on where the voltage is high or low. So that nominal voltage peak, it, it might uh, indicate a threshold of potential problem? Yeah, the lower be... voltage would indicate that there's excessive load in that particular area or a problem in the grid that they, go, they didn't know about that they had to go out and fix. It's probably important to note that this data, the magic we're seeing here, is as a result of us using Greenplum. EMC's Greenplum allows us to really aggregate the data, a lot of data, all at once and produce some of these fantastic images and reports and the visualization of big data here you see. So. Compare that to maybe using a, a traditional data warehouse. Like, uh, uh, would you would you be able to do it using a traditional data warehouse? Well, you'd have to have or? a lot of patience because instead of queries coming back in minutes, they'd come back in days. Okay, so it really couldn't be optimized for that sort of real-time decision making. No, and the problem with analytics is sometimes you know what you're looking for, so it's an exploratory process. If you have to take hours to get one answer back, you get pretty bored with the exploration process. Yeah, so it's like the old programming days where we used to yep. have to wait for the mainframe and yeah. stick your cards in a deck and wait for it to come say, back oh, tomorrow. Oh, I got another 45 minutes before I can oh, yeah. solve yeah. that bug. So kind of a similar thing going on here. Now and but finally the, the other thing these meters can do is when an outage occurs, these meters will in effect ET phone home. They'll send a message saying it, that they've lost power. Here's an actual outage. You see the green lines coming green dots coming back. Those are meters that are reporting back they have power restored. And so the utility had an outage. It's actually a squirrel got across the feeder and tripped the feeder. You see there's one section that's still out. Now all of the customers are back. The squirrel's dead. The squirrel's dead, by the way. So this allows the utility to know exactly all the meters that are out and when they have power back. So it's more accurate as far as their dispatching of their crews, and they don't leave a customer stranded they didn't know about. How much data are we talking about here that you guys so typically, each one of these meters has anywhere from 4 to 30 channels. Those 4 to 30 channels are read every 15 minutes or every half an hour. Utilities have 4 to 5 million customers, so you do the math. Yes. A year's worth of data times 5 million customers times 365 days times 96 readings times anywhere between 4 and 30 values. That's a lot of data. It's a lot of data. <laughs> and utilities want to look at long-term trends, so they'll do multiple years. How was last year compared to this year from a voltage standpoint? Okay, and you're able with your infrastructure to operate on all that those data sets, you're not having to... Well, with some... Green with green Plum yeah. we were. Prior to that, we were not able to do that. So this is game-changing. It is game-changing. Yeah. To change a utility from a reactive state to a proactive state, to be active yeah. to the customer, and call them up ahead of time saying, we're fixing a problem you didn't know about. This is, with uh, Greenplum, this is definitely the killer app of the smart grid. And yeah. the benefit goes beyond just the utility. Consumers like us ultimately get better uh, you know, updates on what's happening. We don't have to call the utility when the power goes out. Utility knows. So where are you guys at? You said you're a startup. Um, tell us a little bit more about Silver Spring now. Sure, we're based in Redwood City and started in 2002. We've got 600 people. You're in Oracle country. You're using we're Greenplum. <laughs> that, that's kind of cool. Oh, we use Oracle also, oh, okay. so we use both. But but Oracle couldn't do this, is what you're saying. Uh, you know, the, everyone, everyone's got some positives. Yeah, was, so. oh, you, in, in fairness, you wouldn't put Greenplum into your Oracle applications. That, that wouldn't be uh, the right use case for that either, would it? Yeah, well, we're, we're really happy with what we have, and yeah. Greenplum's done a great job for us on the analytics side, so yeah, definitely okay, working so out. Yeah, okay, in Redwood City, uh, how, how, when did you get started? Uh, 2002. 2002, so yep. uh, you're up, running, fully funded. Uh, yep, fully funded, doing great. Got lots of customers, lots more to come. Outstanding. Yep. Well, Mel, Frank, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, sharing this great demo with us. Good luck with uh, with Silver Spring. Um, you must be working with my friends down at uh, Austin Energy, right? I mean, come on. Those on your short list? Uh, they uh, are. Yeah, they're heavy into the smart meters. Uh, Have them call us. Andres Carvalho, CIO down there. So, oh, you know him personally? I do. Seriously, I'll give you my card. Have him call me. All right, good. Okay. Oh, he'd be all over this. <laughs> oh, definitely. All right, good. Thank you. All right, man. All right. All right. Thanks.